many people were extremely hyped about the i3 7350K before its release. We covered it in our first podcast episode, and yeah, let's fast forward a couple of months and this thing is absolute trash and an abysmal marketing strategy by Intel. Here are the reasons you should not buy an i3 7350K. First off, this CPU is in fact a dual core. Many modern games recommend a quad core for optimal performance. Some can't even boot if you have a dual core. Please do remember that the i3-7350K is in fact only a dual core with hyperthreading, which does give it four logical processors, but by no means does that constitute a quad core CPU. Not even close. However, I did make a video not too long ago, actually only a few days ago, highlighting the Pentium G4560, calling it the king of budget CPUs, and I still stand my ground with that statement, even though that too is a dual core with hyperthreading, and that is because of their relative pricing, costing only $75, which nobody in their right mind can expect four true KV Lake cores for. On the other hand, the i3-7350K comes in at $180 US dollars. For that same price, you can buy an i5-6500, a true quad-core CPU. While you may not have the overclocking potential, at least it can play every game under the sun. Although overclocking gives extra performance, and this thing can be easily pushed above 4.7 GHz, Let's have a look at the things that we will need to be able to perform that overclocking in the first place. We will need a Z270 motherboard which will cost about $150, so that's already $330 in total. And not only that, we would need a relatively beefy CPU cooler in order to get enough cooling to push it above maybe even 5 GHz. The Reven Justice should do this. This costs around $45.50, so that pushes our final budget to around $375.50. So if we were to buy a non-overclockable chip, what will we potentially get for around that price tag? For just $13.22 more, I can get an i7-7700 and an MSI B250M Pro DVH motherboard, which I can go even cheaper if I would have opted for a B150M and then updated the BIOS, but I'm sure many people simply do not want to go through that procedure. The 7700 comes with a stock cooler, and that is all you will need as this chip cannot be overclocked but you can spend a little bit more on a CPU cooler if you can't stand the noise. In conclusion, please do not fall into the trap that this is a budget overclocker's dream. Although this may look as such, it is really just far from it. At this point, there is no point in buying any modern i3 at all. The Pentiums have now taken its reign, and the only thing standing between the 7100 and the G4560 is a small difference in their clock speeds which really, in my opinion, does not justify the price gap whatsoever. There are a few markets that don't require many cores, and those markets do not need overclocking. They never have. So, if you did find this video helpful and I just saved your pocket, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe for more. But anyway, this is Duo from How to Compute, and I will hopefully see you in the next video.